nice angle for a diagonal one. Three in the box. Finds Graydon. Nice start from Ray Graydon. And Conroy coming. Hodgson. And Hodgson. Handball on the line. A penalty. Without any question, it was handball by McPhail. And the yellow card, of course, will be shown anyway because of the handball for ungentlemanly conduct. Although I think it's a bit extreme to expect a player not to handle in that situation. I don't know, he couldn't get his head to it. Moves for Graydon. A goal number one instead of a fine effort by Conroy. Matthews. Tibbet. Runs a bit for Bourne. Battle in square. Still Bourne. And another penalty. Tripped by Briggs. So after 20 minutes, chance for the score to be 1 1, a penalty apiece. Jeff Bourne, the player brought down by Briggs, is to take it. And scores comfortably. Sabella. Positive challenge by Ray Graydon. The guy. And it's going in. who tipped it forward, but the ball going into the net off Gary Briggs, a defective pass is going for. It was more important than the first meeting of the two Sheffield clubs for eight years. For weeks, the game had been built up as a South Yorkshire Cup final. For the supporters of both Wednesday and United, it must have been a happy reminder of the days when Sheffield had two First Division teams worthy of their tremendous support. But, with the capacity crowd expected, could it also mean the sort of crowd trouble which almost inevitably accompanies such occasions? Tim Ewart saw both the game and the police operation which went with it. They started queuing before dawn. By the time the gates opened at 9.30, there were thousands of fans outside Hillsborough. Already inside, a squad of more than 500 police, one of the biggest operations ever seen in the city. Their job to try to keep the peace both here and in the streets nearby. It was the game that everyone had been waiting for all season. One which had the city council so worried about crowd violence that they brought the kickoff forward to 11 o'clock before opening time. Yet perhaps it was the long walk to the ground, there were no corporation buses, or the inevitable Boxing Day hangover. But as kick-off time approached, everything was going smoothly. And on top of that, there was the months of planning put in by the men of South Yorkshire Police. Oh, a tremendous amount, yes. Uh, we started thinking about this match last August. We look at the charts, we see that Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, are here on Boxing Day, a derby match, a lot of interest, both teams doing reasonably well in the third division, United top of the league. We know we're going to have a tremendous gate. Bit of a military operation almost, that. Well, yes, you could say that. If you saw my operation order, it would convince you that it is. The entrance of the teams owed more to Wembley than the third division, but with 50,000 people paying £70,000 to watch the match, perhaps the gesture wasn't too extravagant. Yet for a time, it looked as if the game itself might not live up to the preliminaries. The mud was holding back any attempt at constructive football, and mistakes were frequent. United here were lucky to survive this attack, and as time went on, Wednesday looked the more likely team to score. The goal finally came from Ian Mellor. It was the sort of present that Wednesday's fans had been praying for, yet the celebrations never got out of control and the police were having their easiest job for years. Then United hit back quickly and were unlucky not to equalise. 
Wednesday goalkeeper Bob Boulder made a memorable save and kept his side ahead at half-time. Whatever the two managers had to say to their teams, it had a greater effect on Sheffield Wednesday. They failed to increase their lead on this occasion, but in trying to stop the attack, the United captain Mick Spate took a kick on the chest. From then on, Wednesday stormed ahead. Terry Curran finished off a strong left-wing run by McCulloch, and three minutes later, it was 3-0. This time, a similar right-wing run by Curran was easily finished off by Jeff King. All that was left was a penalty, given away by the United keeper, Richardson. It completed a sad morning for Sheffield United and their fans. But no one else was disappointed as Mark Smith made it 4-0. And for the police, it had been a perfect operation, not one arrest. As far as the league table's concerned, things aren't looking too bad for either of the Sheffield teams. United still at the top, Wednesday fourth, and Grimsby slipping into second place after yesterday's win against Barnsley. Welcome to Match of the Day in which we join 46,000 people in the sunshine at Bramall Lane to watch the third division derby between Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday. Right, let's now go to Yorkshire's special Match of the Day, Sheffield United against Sheffield Wednesday. As it stood this morning, it looked as if Wednesday would go up and United wouldn't. But as both managers would quickly point out, a couple of results could change the whole picture. Your commentator, Barry Davis. The Sheffield team is greeted by a crowd whose size will be better than only one league round this afternoon. There are 46,000 here at Bramall Lane, which means that very nearly 100,000 people would have seen the two Sheffield derbies this season. And even in the third division, as both teams are for the first time, there's no denying the enthusiasm for the game in the city, or indeed as we can see from the spires on St Mary's Church, the ingenuity of some of the supporters. For United beaten 4-0 at Hillsborough on Boxing Day, there's only pride really in this match, as their last chance of promotion surely went with defeat at South End yesterday. They made two changes on that occasion, including the return of the Argentine Alex Sabella, fit again for a setting which had surely suited. The Sheffield Wednesday coming to where is their greater support. Promotion is very much on, currently in second place the result of a 14-game unbeaten run. They're at full strength with one exception, the absence of Andy McCulloch, for whom John Lowy substitutes at number 10. The referee this afternoon, Joe Worrell of Warrington. So the Sheffield Derby, number 101, gets underway on a fine, sunny afternoon and on a dry, fairly hard pitch. And the first... Fairly hard challenge of the match. And it produces the first free kick. Uh, John McPhail recovered. And the first free kick comes down the left side and runs out for the goal kick. Pulling who? 50 50 is the verdict. Current very nearly put in by John Lowy. Certainly, something of a wrestling match was going on too. It's Curran trying to get onto the bus. It's Grant. Hornsby. Strange position for McPhail to come from, but it was effective. Blackhall. 
Diagonal cross met by Mella. And a good save by Paul. A diagonal cross that was fairly low, and Mella met well, and the goalkeeper saved well. Martin forward, straight behind him. Sabella Square of Tibbet. Way back all, Brian Hornsby. Well, had to adjust his run a little bit. Hornsby shot. Feel for handball, but it hasn't been given. The guy. Living a little dangerously. Oh, dear, oh dear. Tibbet. Everything is to his right. Miller. Two players on the field, but this fellow Sabella is the only one prepared to dwell on the ball. Morgana, looking for someone to move into the gap, which was to his right. Kenworthy. The teenage battle there is won by Jones. Another teenager, Mark Smith, gets the ball up again. Now Sabella. Two ahead of him. And that's all he's got on, really. Spate. I suspect it ran away from him at the moment of impact, or just prior to the moment of impact. And Sabella, his forward pass was hit pretty sharply didn't altogether give Spate as comfortable a ride as he might have liked Curran made by Tibbet it took another knock on the face sure that he backed into him and is certainly teasing him. The referee can't allow that to go on. Curran being called over, but really classic case of Curran trying to go the other player. Can be no question. And it seemed to me that he walked on his boot right in front of Kenworthy. The referee obviously felt that it that he hadn't, but I can't believe he couldn't see it. He was right on top of it, so maybe I'm wrong in my judgment. It just shows how difficult it is to be a referee. He's been running this game very well, and Curran's attitude, in my opinion, has caused this problem. The referee forced to uh, call on for some attention from Sesco World Attorney Kenworthy. A match 
which as Curran applauds Kenworthy, a match which had been played hard but with a good spirit, now may well take on another flavour. And they renew their close relationship, Kenworthy and Curran. things. Morgana. I think Garner ran into Hornsby then and the referee was right not to get the free kick. I must say this youngster Kevin Taylor has been at the club since joining them from school through the apprentice ranks. Looks a very useful player indeed. catch can going on there and they got away it was Butlin who got up extremely well with the looping header that came back off the post and John McPhail who put Sheffield United in front kisses to the crowd and the home side score the first goal of the 101st derby Seconds of the first half remaining. There's Hornsby for Wednesday. Karen and Kenworthy. And Kenworthy has certainly gained more points than Karen during the course of the first 45 minutes. Strike the strike with Curran. Taylor, Curran, and Sabella. And the last whistle of the half. And United go off to the applause of their faithful leading by a goal to nothing from a set piece taken by Sabella had a first of Butlin and the foot of McPhail putting them in front famous pace for both clubs in the stand Derek Dooley there now the commercial manager with United famous centre forward for Wednesday in the past Sheffield United, who have recorded just one win in their last ten matches, begin the second half a goal to the good. We'll do something to make up for their disappointment in the promotion stakes. They can at least share the honours in the derby matches. Here's Mickey Spate. And still, and he's had a nice piece of footwork. The cross was a bit too close to Bob Boulder. Tibbets, Hornsby, waiting for it wide. It's 
Curran and Kenworthy. Now Blackwell. Four in the area for Wednesday. And in comes Lowe, well met by McPhail. Blackhall is done well. And Garner doing a very effective job on the left side, just covering there. Fair spell of pressure this by Sheffield Wednesday. at his back and Sabella oh, he's got away from them oh and he does so so well he had three men around him and he just came round in a wide arc and no wonder he falls to his knees to take the applause of the Windsor supporters but the United supporters must be wondering how on earth he was allowed to go away he came away in an arc, and when he was in space, he hit a right foot shot that was beating the goalkeeper from the moment that the ball was struck. Well, say what you like about Terry Curran. It cannot be denied that he's a character, and when he wants to, he can play. 1-1. by the goalkeeper coming forward to his six-yard line. There's plenty of beef behind it. The goalkeeper was coming forward and turned it away well. The goalkeeper incidentally born in Chesterfield where so many good goalkeepers seem to come from. It's Grant at the back. He did well again, the keeper, and blocked appeal for a penalty for hands but the referee as he has throughout the game and it's not been easy for him showing great authority flickering at the back flickering catching Tibbet down is Kenworthy. Bagara in contact presumably with Harry Haston, the manager up in the stand. So 
Tony Kenworthy, who's played on manfully and played well with this injured toe, finally has to call it a day. And on comes John Flood. back in the midfield. Here's Sabella. Martin didn't take it with him. Now Garner. Tim Worthy finally going off to the dressing room. It's the doctor with him. Fair test for young Phil Jones who's taken over the role of marking Curran in the decisive moments perhaps of the game. in this half by Terry Paul that one from Kevin Taylor after earlier from the other man there in your picture David Grant Karen has come to take the corner from the dressing room of Tony Kenworthy is that the problem was a pulled calf muscle. Blood. Sabella. Can't push this way. Begoy. Oh, that's a gift for the keeper. Still the same two forward mark by three. The referee has now checked his watch three times. Here's McPhail. His goal was to be wiped out. And Jack Charlton, I'm sure, very content with the one point gain from this Sheffield derby. With the goal scored spectacularly by Terry Carr on his 21st in the league this season. After in the first half he rather spot the flavour of things. But it wiped out the one by McPhail that had given Sheffield United a half-time lead. Real battling match, in my opinion, very well refereed by Joe Worrell. And it wasn't an easy task for him. Final score, 1-1. Well, exciting as the atmosphere was there at Bramall Lane, I found that rather a messy match to follow. United shirts are stylish and attractive, it's true, but it isn't easy to see the numbers, and with the bright spring sunshine causing shadow problems, it was sometimes confusing. No one could complain, though, about the amount of effort the 22 players put into the game. And that total commitment nearly exploded when, after 30 minutes' frenetic activity, Tony Kenworthy and the goal scorer Terry Curran had a difference of opinion. 
Tell us your view of the incident in the first half that I think threatened to unhinge the game. Um, well, Bolly, I only, I only tapped him on the face, not hard and not, not nasty about it. The thing was, like, he'd come and play the ball, had thrown in, the ball had gone out like him. I tore him accidentally, and he, he taken it the wrong way, and uh, I just tapped him on the face, and then he moaned and groaned, and I said, oh, come on, just tapped him again. And uh, he took, just took it seriously. And what about when you came over to the referee? Because I must say, it did look as though you walked on him. Oh, no, no, I didn't think I walked on him. Uh, I just tapped his hand to you a bit. There were, yeah, there was a, the foot, you know, the dive against get a bit heated and um, he come, I don't know if it was intentional, but he stood on my foot and I fell out a little bit and obviously went down. The incident that led up to that, uh, you got the free kick in your favour um, and he seemed to be chiding you, but he said he was doing it in quite a friendly way, but you obviously didn't take it that way. Um, the first time I let it go, the first time, yeah, I thought it was friendly, but not the second time, he slapped me across the face and uh, no, I didn't like it. No. You see, defenders, Barry, they, they like kicking forwards, but the first time you kick them, they don't like it. I mean, today, today, the second half, he's gone off injured because I got the better in the second half. The first half, he got the better than me. He gave me a couple of whacks, one or, one or two nasty whacks, like from behind. And the, the first time he, um, he gets a whack, he wants to go off because I got the better than him anyway. By that time, of course, you had scored the goal, which made it a one-all draw. Now, tell us about your view of that. Um... Yeah, I, I picked it up from the um, left hand, uh, left hand touchline. Uh, I just come round, saw a gap, and I just whacked it, caught hold of it right, and uh, they went back in the net. But you were marked by three players when you were in the corner flag. Yeah, but the pace took me away from them. What about the pace of the shot? They're just a little bit faster than me, I think. Not much in it. No, I think the the time me a little bit faster than the ball. Ironically, the one moment in the match while you were on the field that uh, you weren't marking him was the time he scored the goal. Yeah, he, he broke on, onto the wing and, and the boss and Danny said leave him when he goes onto the wing so you can pass him on to somebody else. And I think I had, I was picking up a forward in the box and uh, obviously he cut inside. I think it was a bad goal for us because I think we should have shot him down but I think it was a great goal, great goal for, for Sheffield Wednesday anyway. Are there any hard feelings between the two of you? No, not really. No, no. If he's in the bar, I'll buy him a drink. I'm glad to hear that whatever the rights and wrongs of that momentary loss of temper, it's good to know that there was no malice once the game was over. And there certainly wouldn't be between the two managers involved. Harry, derby matches have little to do with promotion or anything of that nature, but you have to concede now three points out of four that Wednesday finished on top this season. Uh, yeah, but um, Jack knows like I do, really. it's not finished yet. Because we've got other top sides to play yet. And uh, I know what Jack's wishing and... Uh, that we beat them, then we help him. And uh, this is the way the game goes, because it's very tight, exceptionally tight. What did you feel about today's game? Whew, I enjoyed it till they scored. But I mean, uh, you know, basically the game was a one-off, wasn't it? I mean, it's the crowd, the atmosphere, tremendous. And uh, the game went with it because, uh, you know, nobody chucked it or bent the head or got the head down and everybody kept going. Jack? Yeah, I agree with him, yeah. It was, it was a bit bumpy and a bit dry, and but everybody got in about the job. And uh, that's what derbies are about. There were two, two goals, which uh, was as many as I thought there would be in the day. <laughs> Presumably, Jack, you're very happy to have come away from here at one point. Well, you're always happy in a local derby when you go away, like in an atmosphere and a crowd like today, to come away with a point. Yeah, I would like two, but I'll settle for one. <laughs>